is the fact that the moral fruits of theistic belief are meager at best. Any objective observer, if asked whether or not theists are morally superior to non-theists, to atheists and agnostics, will have to admit it's really too close to call. I want to emphasize that I'm not claiming that, that theists are morally inferior to atheists and agnostics. I've heard atheists claim that Christianity, for example, corrupts people. And they point to uh, the Crusades, the Spanish Inquisition, the long history of anti-Semitism in Christianity, uh, to the fact that a lower percentage of Christian Germans opposed Hitler than the Christian secular humanists, and uh, excuse me, than the German secular humanists and, and uh, German leftists who had no religious beliefs. They, they might even throw in a few televangelists just to make, just to make the point. In fact, I, I, thought, I thought at one point that on the slide I'd have a picture of Jimmy Swagger crying. I thought that was a cheap shot, so I decided uh, to tell you. Again, my point is I'm not claiming that, that I don't believe that all this evidence shows that theists are worse than non-theists. Um, you can find a lot of evil outside of Christendom as well as inside of Christendom. And the fact that those, the German Christians um, opposed Hitler in smaller numbers than did these atheists and agnostics in Germany, that's because I think that Hitler was a bigger threat to, to the leftists and to the secular humanists than, they were, than he was to the average uh, German Christian. So I don't think that Christians are worse, or any other sort of theists are worse than agnostics or atheists, but rather it's just that so far as we can tell, they're not morally better. Does Professor Craig agree with this? I'm not sure. The quote on the slide suggests he does. But let me read you the whole sentence from which it was taken. Uh, While those of us who are Christian theists undoubtedly find in God a source of moral strength and resolve, which enables us to live lives that are better than those we should live without Him, nevertheless it would be arrogant and ignorant to claim that those who do not share a belief in God do not often live good moral lives, indeed embarrassingly lives that sometimes put our own to shame. I like the second half of that sentence better than the first. Um, the first half seems to imply that theists are morally superior to non-theists. But neither church history nor my own personal experience supports this claim. If I'm right that theists are not noticeably morally superior to the rest of us, then the next question is, why is this fact a red bean? Why does it support naturalism over theism? Because on the assumption that theism is true, one has reason to believe that theistic belief would have significant and noticeable moral fruits that worshiping God would be an abundant source of moral strength. So the absence of such moral fruits is surprising on theism. On naturalism, however, the fact that theistic belief lacks an abundance of moral fruit is not surprising at all. For if naturalism is true, then there is no God, theism is false, and so believing in such a God would not be expected to make people morally better. Thus, the meager moral fruits of theistic belief is a red bean. It's certainly compatible with theism. It doesn't prove that theism is false. But it's more likely on naturalism than on theism. First, he says, theists are not morally superior to non-theists. Well, think about that. That's really hardly surprising on a Christian uh, theistic view, because mere belief in God is just an assent to an intellectual proposition. The belief that theism is true isn't going to change anybody's life, I don't think. Uh, in fact, the scripture even says even the demons believe that God exists, and they tremble. So that mere assent to the belief in theism shouldn't be expected to change lives very much. But secondly, I would also say that what that quotation for me was trying to express was not that I am better than some non-believer. What I said in that quotation is that I am better because I'm a Christian than I would have been had I not been a Christian, than I was when I was a non-Christian. And that's simply a fact, because I became a Christian in, during my teenage years, and I remember what I was like. And I've seen this transformation take place in many, many other uh, young men and women either. Uh, also, when they had a personal experience of God through Christ, then the transformation is wrought in their lives. I think most Christians who have become Christians later in life can say, yes, it was morally transformative for me. What about in general, though? Has the has historically the Christian faith been a transformative positive effect? Well, I think that despite all the crusades, the inquisitions, the uh, uh, abominations that have been done in the name of religion, Christianity has been an enormously positive influence in world history. I turn to Kenneth Scott Lauderet, the uh, Yale historian, and he writes as follows. We have had much to say of the effects of Christianity upon the collective life of mankind as a whole. 
Here has been the most potent force which mankind has known for the dispelling of illiteracy, for the creation of schools, for the emergence of new types of education. From Christianity, a vision impulses for daring intellectual and geographic adventure. The universities were largely Christian creations. Music, architecture, painting, poetry, and philosophy have owed some of their greatest achievements to Christianity. Democracy, as it was known in the 19th and 20th century, was in large part the outgrowth of Christian teaching. The abolition of slavery was chiefly due to Christianity. So were the measures taken to protect the Indians against exploitation by the whites. The most helpful movements for the regulation of war, for the mitigation of sufferings entailed by war, for the eventual abolition of war and owed their inception to Christian faith. The nursing profession, uh, profession has the same origin. The extension of Western methods of surgery was chiefly due through the Christian missionary enterprise. The elevation of the status of women has owed an incalculable debt to Christianity. No other single force in history has been so potent, he says, in bringing about good in the uh, history of mankind. As one of my professors once said, you know, there are no atheistic leper colonies. Just think about it. Who's founded the hospitals and so forth throughout the world? It's generally been people whose lives have been changed by an encounter with Christ uh, through knowing God. So I just dispute the first point, I guess, that, that the moral impact of Christian theism has not been great in world history.